And right now, Father God, it's not about us, Lord, but it's all about you. Yeah. And we thank you for it right now. Right In the mighty name of Jesus, the church, amen. 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 While you get standing in your Bible, we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel. Yeah. Uh, right there in the Bible, we're going to the book of Ezekiel. While you get standing, we're going to read two verses. Amen. In the book of Ezekiel, we're going to read chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 19. Oh, glory be to God. Just two verses on the day. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah, just yeah. say amen. Ezekiel chapter 11. Amen. Verse 1 and verse 11. Those are only two verses we're going to read on today. Amen. amen. I want you all to read them in unison. When you get it again, say amen. Amen. All right, let's read together. Moreover, this one. Oh, amen. Chapter 11, verse 1. Chapter 11, verse 1 amen. and verse 11. Okay. Amen. All right, let's amen. try. More children, stand up. Hold up. Children, y'all stand up too for reading the words. Stand up. Get off your seat. Stand up. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 19. Chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 19. Yes, read. Read. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house. Which would be the east yard, and behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men among whom I saw Jehazaniah the son of Azor, and Pelaniah the son of Benaniah, princes of the people. Verse 19. Verse 19. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And, and I will, I will take, take the stony heart out of their flesh, and, and I will give them a heart of flesh. Amen. Is it your name? What's your neighbor? Neighbor. I will. I will. Give them yeah. one heart. One heart. Oh, uh, we can't have all these different hearts, y'all. Amen. See, I found out that when you're serving the Lord, it's all about it. it's a hard thing. Right. It's not a mind thing, it's not a flesh thing, but it is a hard thing. Look at them, your neighbor. Yeah. It's a hard thing. Yeah. And he promised me that he would give us all just one heart. Yeah. Oh, glory be to God. Yeah. But see, I, I was thinking about this and I was toying with this, and because a lot of times, uh, I, I sat down on Tuesday really and started looking at this stuff, amen? As to how God want us to go this Sunday, uh, what service that I, I got to speak at, amen? amen? And I couldn't get away from this. Now, uh, he, he, I got about five different things that he gave me, but for some reason, I couldn't let this one go, amen? Yes, amen. Because somebody needs to know that the heart that is within them is holding lies. Come on. Uh-oh. Come on, Bishop. Help us, Lord. Help us. It's holding lies. Yes, sir. Why? Because you're lying to yourself. Come on. Do you not know that you can lie to yourself and make yourself believe it? Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been going on for a long time. This ain't something that just started, and it just don't happen in the street. It happens in the church. Amen. You got church folks telling themselves lies. Amen. Saying I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and knowing good and well, they're not even close to the ghost. Preach it. Preach it. It's time that we understand that there needs to be a change taking place. Amen? And we serve a God, if you really want to allow him, that will chisel away at that hard heart that you got right now and replace it with a new heart. Because I think David said, Lord created me, what? A clean heart. So when I got a clean heart, that means that old heart had a problem. Amen. Amen. It was a heart problem. Amen. So he had to clean that thing up. And once he cleaned it up, it became brand new. Yes, sir. Glory be to God. So now when I get a brand new clean heart, that means that's a new thing, isn't it? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Look at David's neighbor. Amen. Removing, Removing my heart my of stone. Do another side and say, neighbor, neighbor, I got to remove, got to remove this heart of stone. Amen. Because when I was looking in the book of Ezekiel, I found out that Ezekiel was not only a man of God, but he was also a prophet that was sent and appointed by God. Amen. And his job was to call the people uh, that from the exile of Israel back to the living God. Because when they was exiled out of Israel, guess what happened? They turned away from God. Amen? Can you remember when you turned your back on God? Can you remember the times when God has told you that you need to get it right and you decided that, well, I'm not ready just yet. I still got a little more time. 
I'm too young right now. Uh, I got a few more years out here partying before I change over and, and decide to try to live right. But how many not know that tomorrow is not promised to you? Amen. Amen. We got them falling down every day, don't we? Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says that a just man can fall seven times to get back up. But I never read in the word where it said that a wicked man can fall down and get back up anytime. Come on now. Amen. Am I right about it? Well. But he's very precise when he said a just man can fall seven times and get back up. But if you found anything in the word of God in these 66 books that told you anything about the wicked can get back up, then you help me out. Because I missed it somewhere. But I found out that folks with stony hearts and their, and their minds are not fixed on Jesus. They're still trying to, when they fall, try to get themselves back up. How many not know that when you ain't got no power, you ain't you can't get back up? Amen. Well, it takes power to get up when you fall down. You got to have some strength, baby. That's why the baby said, the Bible said that the strong and bear the infirmities of the weak. So when I'm weak, then I got somebody by my side that I can reach, that can reach down and pick me back up. Thank you, Lord. But baby, if I'm walking around with folks that ain't got no power, just like I ain't got no power, I don't have no help when I fall. So I'm wondering why all hell done broke loose in my life and I can't get it right. See, like every time I touch something, it tell, it falls down, it get all jacked up because I have all this stuff around me that ain't got no power. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. You got to have power yes, sir. in order to stand today. Yes, sir. We can have a whole lot of head knowledge, education, <coughs> degrees on the wall. But those degrees in education and knowledge don't mean you no good. They can't do you any good without the power of God. Do you not know that God gives you the power to go out and gain wealth? Yes, amen. Huh? Everything that you attain in life, God is the one that gives you the power to go out and get that thing. Amen. Huh? And I like the way Dennis Leonard said it. But he said, now, once you understand that you got the power to go get it, he said, work that thing. Baby, so once you know what power you got, then you can work that thing. But you can't work that thing if you don't know what you got. I'm all right. Somebody else came back and said, show me what you're working with. If you don't know what you're working with, how can you work it? All right. Oh, glory be to God. You got to know what you got, y'all. I mean, without a shadow that you can't wait for the pastor to tell you. You can't wait for a prophet to come in town and tell you. Baby, the word is prophesied to you all by itself. It's telling you what you need. All you got to do is, what the Bible says, it's still asking. Huh? All you got to do is ask. Yes, sir. And you shall receive. What we're doing, we're not asking. Some folks around here trying to demand God and tell God what he got to do. Baby, you can't tell God what he got to do. For real. Huh? You can't make God move when you get ready for him to move. Amen. God moved by his own power, not by your power. That's it. That's it. And I found out in the world that it said, when he came out of hell, he came out with all power in his hand. Not just some power, baby, but all power. But he gave us limited power. We got some power, but we don't have all power. That's right. So we still have to go to him and through him to use the power that he has given us. Why? Because his Holy Spirit is the one that will teach us. Yes, he will. And how to use what he has already equipped us with. Yes. If you don't have a teacher to teach you how to use what he has equipped you with, baby, how can you use it? Yes, sir. Come on. You can't even drive a car unless somebody tell you that you have to put the key in the switch. Uh -huh. And then when you put the key in the switch, you just can't get in there and put it in gear and drive. Baby, somebody got to tell you you got to crank the car up. You got to turn that key. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? Now, if, if you be mindful of it, now look at the children will watch you. Yes, sir. They are learning. You are teaching them something. See, they don't have the knowledge. They don't have the power to do it at this time. But they watch you as they're growing up. Yeah, and as they're growing up, baby, if you turn your back and they can put their hands on that key yeah, and you leave it at its foot, you are bonded that child will crank that car up. Yeah, he yeah. gonna turn that key. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes. Amen. And they would attempt to put it in gear. But now I thank God that he got the braking system now that you're putting it on the brake. You can't put it in gear. But back in the day, there was too many kids pulling them in gear. Yes, sir. Backing up, running into somebody, going forward, running into somebody, killing, getting killed. Mm -hmm. But it's a safety now. Yes, sir. Do you not know that God put a safety switch in you? Come on. Woo. There's a kill switch in you. Y'all ever heard about these motorcycles they got now that uh, for little kids, if their kids fall, they got a kill switch that'll shut that thing right down. 
So as long as that back wheel is still turning, they got a possibility to grab grip again, it'll stand up and they can run over that child or anybody else and kill it. Huh? But God has put a kill switch in you to let you know that while you're in sin, if you, while you're falling back, away from him. That kills which is the Holy Ghost will come in and start talking to you telling you, come on now. Come on. Turn back. Come back. Come back. Oh, we, 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 we take that thing light and we'll say, yeah, all right, now come back, y'all. Come back. We take that light, but it's real. Amen? Amen. We have to tell our old self sometime, come back. This is why the Bible says you got to bring your flesh under subjection, baby. This is something that you got to do. God ain't going to do it. You got to do that to yourself. Baby, you got to talk to your members when they get out of order. Yeah. 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 And your members will get out of order. Your hand, that's why some folks steal. Yeah. Uh, hello, somebody. Because their members are out of order. Out of order. And that member will start doing and getting stuff and grabbing stuff that don't belong to it. And they're not supposed to have his hands on it in the first place. Yeah. Amen? Amen. This is why men and women get caught up into adultery because your eyes are letting you look at somebody else's woman or somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband that ain't joy and make you want to desire that person and then you go and get involved. Yes. You touch them with your eyes. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. And your eyes are the window to your soul. Come on. That's why the Bible says that when you get involved into adultery or the commitment for fornication, there is a soul tie. Yes, sir. That's something that you can't get rid of. And every now and then, the enemy's going to throw that thing back up in your face. Amen. Amen. It's a hard thing. It's bad, y'all, to be married to somebody else. Okay, and every time you see this other person, your heart going back out for them. My God. My God. Do I have a witness? Well, Have it ever happened to you? Amen. Amen. Huh? I ain't been perfect all my life. Y'all look and say y'all been perfect, but I ain't been perfect all my life. I ain't been perfect. Mm -hmm. I done did some stupid stuff. Yes, sir. Amen. With my stupid self at that stupid time. Me too. Huh? <laughs> so there was a whole lot of stupid, stupidness going around at that time. And some of y'all are sitting right now in that stupid seat right now. It's stupid all around you. Come on. But don't want to admit that you're stupid. Stop going to stupid. Huh? Wow. If you're stupid, the first thing to get healed and, and get away from that thing and get that thing right is admitting that you're stupid. Amen. That's it. You got to first admit it, baby, and quit it. If you don't admit it, you can't quit it. Hmm? But we're fighting. We're trying to fight something that we cannot even battle. We can't even see what we're fighting against. Do you not know that we're not wrestling out of your special blood? Huh? We don't wrestle against fresh love, y'all. We wrestle against what? Principality of battles in high places, baby. Now, it ain't no low thing. It ain't on your level, something you can handle. The Bible says it's high places. This way, it's above you, baby. You can't even reach this thing. It's out of your range. You need God to step in. Yeah. It's out of your reach. You can't even bother this thing. You don't have a clue what you're dealing with. Yeah. But in your natural mind, you think you got something going on. You ain't got nothing going on, baby. Now, oh, my God. Now, I think it's just, Mrs. Jones, you got a thing going on. Mrs. Jones can't touch this. Help us to help, Mr. Glory be to God. We got to stop playing. Yes. That's right. And get real. Yes. That's the church. Yes. Get the church. They can talk about me all they want to. No, because I know what they're talking about a lot. Because I found out something a long time ago, y'all, when, when I was released from people prison. That if they don't talk about me, they always say something good about me, then something ain't right about me. But then if I'm trying to live right, I'm trying to do right, baby, bring on your talk. Talk about me. I don't care. It's all right. Because I mean, I got to be doing something right for you to keep on messing with me. To have me on your mind, have me in your mouth. Now you can't even do what you want to do because you're you concentrating on me. Now I got you locked down. Come on. Come on. Yes, man of God. We don't understand. Yes. This is why you said I will give them one heart. How can the church be the church of God and every church around here fighting against one another? Come on! Come on! This pastor don't like this pastor. This pastor don't want to go over anything. Some of his members might want to go over there and like what that pastor talking about. See, baby, it ain't about no holiday food. But baby, if I feed you then, and you start eating, you're going to want to come back and get some more food. But if I'm not giving you nothing, you ain't going to want to come back. So if you ain't feeding your people, you are supposed to get work. I'm going to try to feed everyone that come in here. Yeah. By the grace of God. Yes, but 
they leave here and not leave here with nothing. They're going to have something to hold out on the inside. They're going to leave here. They can tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done to me. Glory to God. Yes, Ooh, God. Lord, thank you. You see, my, 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 no, stop. Had to mm -hmm. try to get them to turn back to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm -hmm. He began to speak and he said, Your hearts yes, have been turned to stone. Come on, come on. Yeah. Hmm? Um, and the Bible teaches us that. It really doesn't matter what condition our heart is in if it doesn't. Oh my God. And it don't really matter what's inside of us if it ain't of God. Y'all catch that? Let me see that again. Amen. It said that the Bible said that it really doesn't matter what condition our heart is in. And it don't really matter what is on the inside of us. If it's not of God. Amen? Why? Because the thing that God is looking for go beyond you and me. Yes, Amen. Baby, what God is looking for is way out of our range. We can't even thank Him. Our imagination won't even take us there. Amen? Amen. Oh, we got a song right say, let me take you there, baby. Uh, nobody on this earth can take you there where God needs to come take on, you. On. He's the only one can take you there by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. But God is concerned not only about our heart being turned to stone and being created clean and, and being a uh, new, but he's also concerned about how we think. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, work it. Yeah. Work it right there. Our minds and thoughts have us Doing some stinking thinking. Yeah. Oh, yes. I ain't as bad as so and so. You still dirty? Well, well. I pay my times. I go to church. I say in the choir. You still crooked? Well, watch yourself. Right. You back the lines, and I don't know. You still hold on. I prophesied. I lay hands on the sick, and they recover. cover you still lying. Jesus. Yeah, true. It's too much of that going on. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I'm not knocking. I'm, right now, I'm, 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 I'm teaching the Bible right now. And, and it does not matter how anyone feels right now. But I'm not talking about the gays right now. But the Bible spoke about homosexuality yeah. yes. in Leviticus. Yes, and it told you that when you get involved into that man on man and woman on woman, that God will turn you over to a reprobate state. Yes. Yeah. Now, what do that mean, Bishop? Everybody that said, I'm coming out the closet, I'm gay, I'm not, I'm not homosexual. Baby, they just got turned over. Why can they confess with their mouth that they are, oh, y'all oh, oh, missed that. Y'all missed that. See, God, did, God let them speak it out of their mouth. Yeah. See, out of your mouth, what you won't do is speak that Jesus rose, Jesus died, he rose, he got him to do this, and you know. Huh? That's what you want to speak out of your mouth. Not that I'm gay. You were born that way. Huh? He didn't, he didn't raise no uh, birth, no Steve and Steve and uh, uh, Eve and Eve. <laughs> Did he? He said Adam and Eve. And he told them to replenish the earth. What man you know can get pregnant? Thank you, Lord. No Eve and Eve. What woman can get pregnant another woman? No. So what you getting out of it? You just got yourself turned onto a reprobate rubber state and you're on your way to hell. Huh? You got a one-way ticket, baby. And if you spoke it with your mouth, like them fools who got on TV, talking about, I love him. I love her. Do you not know ain't no coming back from that? Y'all better read y'all about Look at the book of Leviticus. Ain't no coming back with that. Some things you just don't play with. That's right. The Bible said that man is going to be his own demise. Man is going to destroy himself. And it's happening right now. That thing that got so widespread in the United States of America that is no longer one nation under God. Amen? Because the one nation under God, then you wouldn't go against God. Amen? Because the word of God tells you not to do that. Amen? So how can you be a nation under God and you're doing what God said don't do? Lord, Lord, Lord. 
Huh? How can you tell the truth and nothing but the truth and you out here acting a fool? How can a gay preacher tell me anything? How can a homosexual tell me anything from the word of God? When you are really contaminated, you just messed up. Huh? Yes, I understand that it's true that sometimes you experiment and you try different things. But baby, you better let somebody that can get a prayer through get to you and pray that thing up out of you. Bind that enemy up. Amen. Just because you got messed up when you were a child, somebody tampered with you, you still don't have to turn that way. I'm sorry, you were not born that way. Amen. Amen. Don't let what somebody did to you as a child cause you to mess up and go to hell. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Why? Because you yet have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. You got to choose you this day. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can't put that on whoever raped you or whoever molested you. You can't put that on them. Baby, that's on you. Right. Yes. Hmm? Yes, we have a lot of unforgiveness in our heart. Yes, we hmm? Man. That we got to deal with. Yes. Some folks take that unforgiveness to the grave with them yes. so you know what time it is, don't you? Yes. Ain't no even ain't yes. no around that. Because the Bible says if you don't forgive them, you, I won't forgive you. Yes. So if I don't forgive you, baby, you own your way to hell. You want to stand before the judge. I am the judge. And I already spoke your damnation. It is what it is. Whew. That's the word. Bishop just hit a nerve then. Y'all know I wrote a book on that, don't you? Bishop hit a nerve. Come on. In the book, I, I, God gave me, he gave, gave me this and I'm sitting down out your way. He, he said to me, when they say they are coming out of the closet, they are only going deeper in. When they open their mouth and I'm coming out, they ain't doing them going deeper in. That's where that reprobate mind coming in. Amen. God don't give them up. Don't, don't thank God won't give you up. All right. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we got to know what we're dealing with, y'all. We told his little children not to play with fire. Come on, come on. The fire burning. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus then told you by the word that he received from his father. Yes, sir. Don't get yourself entangled with them that is not of him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're supposed to separate yourself yes, sir. from them. Yes, sir. So how can you continue to walk and entangle yourself with the cares and affairs of this world and still say you love the Lord? Come on. Remember I told you that's that lying thing on the inside of you? You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. And maybe until you can what, be true to thy own self, you will always be stuck in that rut. Amen? This lie, but I can't get to church on time. I can't get to Sunday school on time. I can't get up. Maybe you get up and go everywhere else you want to go. When you want to go, why you can't do what God asks you to do? Matter of fact, he don't just only ask, but he requires you to do it. If you want to make it. That's a requirement. That you serve him and give him some time. Amen. Huh? Yeah. And I only ask you for 10% of your time. And you're going to tell me out of your whole seven days that you can't give him 10% out of a week? Come on. Now, baby, yes. you got a problem and it's serious. Yes, huh? yes. 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 And I can't help you with it. Come on. Huh? All I can do is tell you what the word of God says. And it's up to you to work that thing out. You got to go to the Father for yourself. Come on. Huh? Why? Because you got a mindset that it's all about me and what I want to do. Huh? And when you got that mindset, can't nobody help you. Only God can do what he needs to do. Amen? Glory be to God. That's why I sit back. And even the even evangelist, who says, I love her, right? Huh? And she said, she's very beautiful, y'all. Very beautiful. But I had to talk about her, didn't I, baby? But I wanted to see just what she was going to do. Last week, right? We had a panel, and her baby, and a baby girl had a baby shower. I wanted to see what she's going to need in the baby shower from the church. I mean, I'm just being real. Huh? She came, but it was the end of the service. Amen? And the Bible said, do what? Put me first. Not just a mind thing, y'all. Because your mind already all jacked up. That's why he deal with the heart. The heart got to want to serve him. The heart got to want to love on him and suck with him. Amen. If your heart wants to do that, if your mind can't stop you. Your flesh can't stop you. If your heart is made and fixed on you. 
You won't let those things distract you. Remember I told her about the, uh, no distractions? Stay focused. Baby, this is what the end is doing in these days. He's distracting you with everything because he, you was concerned about what somebody else is going to say. But baby, I ain't concerned about what nobody say but God. Because right. he got the final word. Right. Amen. Amen. So what? I made a thousand dollars. My bill come out to nine hundred and seven. Ten percent of that thousand dollars, hundred dollars. God got to get his person. You hear me? Right. The other nine hundred that he entrusted me with. If the bills don't get all paid, they will get paid to next week. But God is gonna get what He requires. Right. Yeah. Or somebody listen to that. You're wondering why you're still, like Nelly Cole say, I'm catching hell. Come on, you're wondering why I'm still catching hell and going through hell. It's because you won't do what God told you to do. Amen. He didn't give you a choice on that, baby. He said that this is what you got to do. Come on. Amen. Some of them don't let Lord, know my heart, baby. Stop lying to you. I told you, you got that lying thing in your heart. God don't understand your heart and he don't know your heart nothing. That old mess, messy, nasty, nasty heart you got, he don't know that thing. Mm. Why? Why he don't know it? He said, I walk the well in no unclean place. So if your heart ain't right with God, it's unclean. And his Holy Spirit, his Spirit will not the well. And no unclean place. So don't come to church playing with me. Somebody, the Lord know my heart. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to me. Because number one, I'm not believing you no way. Amen. I might not want to hurt your feeling at the end and tell you, baby, stop lying. But I'm going to start praying for you. Because I know you're lying. Any excuse that you make Amen. not to do what God requires you to do on, is that lying spirit that you got to break loose from. Too long. We have been lying to ourselves. Too long, y'all. Think about this thing. How long are you going to continue to lie to yourself? It's bad enough for somebody else to lie to me. I don't, I don't even like that because when I catch somebody in a lie. But if I get mad because I catch somebody else in a lie, why can I not get mad at myself for lying to my own self? Right. I should be the first one I get mad at. Right. If I'm a liar, no. how can I can't get mad at another liar when I'm a liar. I know I got haters, baby. You gonna have haters to the day you die. <laughs> <laughs> but why focus on being distracted by your haters, man? Because every time they push them up, tell them, I'm gonna try to, uh, uh, I'm gonna try to grab a round on that ladder. Like I said, every round go higher and higher. Now I'm walking, I'm climbing Jacob's ladder. But baby, if you give me a chance, you push me hard enough, I'm gonna try to get, get a little boost with it, a little skip, or a hop with it. I'm gonna try to grab that round up there real high and just pull myself up. Cause I can hold on pretty good, y'all. Like on the monkey bar. Until I can ease it, or some kind of way get the other hand up there. Yeah. Then I can pull myself on up. Yeah. 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 Out of that book and Mari Clay that you're trying to put in there. Hey, deal with that. Huh? I put that in there. It's amazing how God moved. Yes. And I was watching a movie, y'all. How many of y'all watched the movie The Godfather? Hey, how many of y'all remember that movie? Godfather, Godfather 3. I was thinking about that movie, and as I was thinking about it, I thought about how the mafia chief, he met with the cardinal, okay, which is the priest, right? And he told the priest that he had got all your money in, they've been involved in a massive fraud, God's fishing. 
So the pastor and leaders of the church is telling you that when you don't pay God, your time is off. You're playing, you're fraud. You're trying to defraud God. Yeah. Huh? So it's just like the young man, the mafia boss, telling the archbishop on his aunt, on his other bishops and the Vatican, right? Uh -huh. What they're doing, right? It ain't no different with us. Right. Amen? And we've been doing this stuff. For a long time. See, we watch movies sometimes, but see, if you watch that movie and see what the real plot is in that movie, you can sometimes see yourself. Because all, right, all, right. all those movies are really trying to tell you something if you take time and pay attention instead of just watching for, ooh, that's a good movie. Baby, but what did you get out of the good movie? Yes. Yes. Did you really understand the good movie? Uh huh? Every movie that they make, y'all, they strip right those things. They got a plot. Amen. They got a message they're trying to send out to you through that movie. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we get caught up into the hype that we don't even see what the message was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's that movie, baby? Uh, the Kid. How many of watched the movie The Kid? Huh? But uh, what's the boy's name? Uh, Bruce Willis in it. If y'all really watched that movie, y'all, that movie had a beautiful message to it. I never knew that. I had to pay attention to it. It really caught my eye when I, when I was pointing it out to me. Uh -huh. There's a message in that movie. And it's all about you. Yeah. The little kid that you were when you grew up and just because uh -huh. things didn't turn out the way that they want you, you thought it was going to turn out in life, now you start having a pity party. Huh? Uh -huh. All about what you didn't accomplish, what you did, and it was somebody else's fault that caused you not to be what you knew that you should have been. Huh? And that little kid came back and talked to the grown man that you are now and began to talk to you and let you know that it wasn't, no, it wasn't the kid fault huh, that you didn't get there. It's your fault because when you got up, then you could really have to let this stuff go. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. See, we hide and we sit around here, y'all, and we have a lot of anger in us. Yes, huh? Who in here don't have an anger problem? And forgiveness. Anybody raise their hand? We always deal with that, don't we? Yeah. So we're going to deal with that too, y'all. We're going to do a teaching with that. Dear. We're going to do an in-depth teaching on that. Because I found out some things about that. That thing is so deep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we don't even stretch the surface of it. Because what? Our minds can't even think what's really beneath that anger. Amen? All we know that we're angry. Because we don't like this person or they did something to us that we didn't like. But it's much deeper than that, y'all. Do you not know that it is a spiritual thing? Yes. Huh? Anger is from the spiritual world. Yes, it is. Huh? And it ain't from God. That's the enemy's trap. Mm -hmm. hmm? Could even be a generational curse that you've been passed on from some of your family members. Huh? But you got to know what you're dealing with. Amen? Amen. And now after this, Colonel told after the Martha boss told the colonel about this, the colonel did something very profound in that movie. In the Martha, the Father, he went over and he reached into a brook. Y'all know what a brook is, right? And he reached down into that brook and he grabbed the stone out of that brook. And he grabbed that stone he broke that stone in half. Now that stone had been sitting in water for many of years. Why do you think Ezekiel was preaching to the valley of dry bones? Y'all, we got dry bones in the church. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, 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 why are you messing with me like this today? It's all right now. <sighs> you know how we use that church back if y'all only knew? If y'all only knew some of the stuff that the Lord got running through this little computer box up here right now to blow your mind. Huh? 